So, hi, Dr. Henry, how are you? I'm good. Hi, Janelle. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for being here. On behalf of Cal Poly Pomona, I'd like to again welcome you and thank you uh, for your work. We are delighted to have you as our featured speaker for the Golden Leaves Author Awards uh, during National Library Week with the theme of Ready, Set, Library. <laughs> and I know that libraries hold a special place in your heart, and we'll get to that in, in just a bit. Um, you know, having grown up in Los Angeles since the age of three, um, it's really exciting to have the opportunity, honestly, to speak with you, to learn more about your journey, and to have that be shared with others. And so even as I think about, you know, you being a Cal Poly Pomona alum, with your bachelor's in political science and having your academic upbringing, if you will, at the master's level, the doctoral level, specifically in public health. Um, again, um, it is just a pleasure to be able to spend time in conversation and to connect with you on today. And so with this beautiful tapestry of experiences, um, if you can please share with us what motivated you to become an author? Well, first, I'd like to just say thank you for welcoming me to, to Cal Poly. Um, it means a lot to me to uh, be welcomed back to my university, a place where it provided a, a significant uh, foundation for, for me for, for moving forward. And then even more so during library week, li libraries have been a very important part of my life. It was an important part of my experience at Cal Poly Pomona and at uh, the other locations that I've pursued uh, education in. So I, I appreciate the timing of it and, and I appreciate the invitation. Yes, I've done uh, a lot. Um, you know, I, uh, the Cal Poly being a, um, a learn by doing institution, the Cal States being learned by, by doing means that, that you can gain um, practical experience across a broad variety of scientific and educational pursuits. While I was at Cal Poly, I took advantage of that. You know, I took a long time finding out exactly what I liked. And then later in my career, each one of those experiences ended up being bits of a puzzle that came together later as a professional in my master's degree and then on in my doctorate and in my professional career. So, so I can, I, I'm happy to be here. Um, as far as what motivated me to write the books, um, I, I love stories. I grew up, my family tells stories, we share stories, we, I, we love stories and stories were a way that my family used to teach us ways of behaving. Uh, ways of thinking, ways of being, ways of, of, of achieving were done through storytelling. So because of that, we were encouraged to make up stories. Well, I was an author when I was a kid. I was writing books when I was a young kid. I would go to the library, get as many books as they would let me get on a subject. If it was 16 books, I, I would carry as many books as I could. And I would go and I would imbibe those books. I would imbibe them. And then um, fortunately, my mother, who at the time was not a teacher, but became a teacher and later principal and educator. But at the time she was stay at home mom. She would listen to if I wanted to tell my stories. She was a patient listener while I told her my latest discovery of whatever it was that I discovered. Then my family would they would it would be one of two things. Oh, you're going to write books one day. That's what the family would say. You're going to write, you're going to be writing books one day because they would see me read all the books. Or people would say, when you going to write that book? It's two different inflections. One is you're going to do it. Then the other one, the people are impatient that you haven't written the books. But um, that's where the, the motivation started off with the love of stories. Yeah. You know, thank you for that. That is, um, it's beautiful, really, you know, espousing you know, the importance of and the power of storytelling and the familial kind of um, upbringing and rootedness in terms of that impact on you, the expectations, and even trying on the identity from such a young age in terms of what it means to be an author. Um, I, I love that. Um, and 
And so I, I want to talk about something else that you mentioned in terms of really kind of going to the libraries, checking out all the books that you can. <laughs> I'm kind of getting a visual here. If you could talk a little bit more about, you know, what role did libraries play in your research as a student, as a public health professional, and now as an author? Well, thank you. I, I really like this question. I just loved libraries. And that was a place, nobody, uh, it, I was accepted in there for whatever subject I wanted to read about or anything. If I wanted to just read Shakespearean sonnets for whatever reason, for my ninth grade English class, you have to go in and you feel kind of embarrassed. Can you show me where the Shakespearean sonnets are? The person doesn't laugh at you and say, what are you reading Shakespearean sonnets for? They tell you where to go to find the Shakespearean sonnets and, and to understand them and they accept that. And I just always found that, wow, libraries are a place where um, all of your ideas uh, and I hope this continues to be this way, <laughs> that the ideas of human experience are a place where they can be shared, discussed, read, and learned from. You, you know, and I, I found libraries to be that place, you know, of, of thought freedom and that you, you weren't a color in a library necessarily. You know, like when you would walk around and sometimes you're you're an athletic black kid or whatever, you're 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 this and that. But when you would get in the library, it's a it's a place of the mind. And I would find that very refreshing to just be a human with a brain that thought and I could engage with other humans, even if it was just through books, who are very, very different from me but I could read their thoughts and imbibe that and in a way have a conversation with them. And it made me think about like, um, it's the commonality of it's, it's like a, it's a very human place. The libraries, I hope this is making sense. Like it was a place where I just felt like I'm a human in here and these are humans ideas and, and, and I could contribute my human idea to the rest of this human idea. And I'm not all of the labels that people put on me, which are sometimes feel limiting to me, but this is a place that if my ideas can stand in the world, then they stand and I somehow gain a sense of humanity through that. The libraries just were a place where it really opened my mind up. It was a place where, where even though like I was one kid, sometimes I was the only black kid in some classes when we moved out of Los Angeles, that I wasn't a black kid. I was a kid who was interested in satellites or whatever. And the librarian would help me and nobody would, there wasn't, um, it was a safe, it became, they were safe spaces for me. I didn't, um, and I'm glad that I, I didn't experience play where it felt unsafe in any kind of way for me, you know. Um, I see you nodding. I hope that resonates with you. I don't know. Can you relate to that? It's definitely, you know, resonating. And, you know, thank you so much, first off, for, um, you know, just the response that, you know, while I was not there with you, I can also picture a felt experience through your experience um, in that uh, libraries can serve as a great facilitator of student success. And when you talked about libraries just being safe spaces, you know, I really kind of think about also language that, you know, around equity and inclusion and social justice that's that's brave spaces. Like, um, so I'm nodding because all of what you're saying is making sense. And it's taken me right back to um, experiences that I had and the role that libraries played in my academic upbringing and my career trajectory. And just kind of thinking through the centralized place that libraries have in institutions of higher education, in communities, and facilitating access. And that's so completely powerful in terms of what you're sharing. But Dr. Henry, I would you know, sincerely 
I'd like to thank you again for your presence, for your work past and present, and you know the time spent in connection today. Um, you know, it's really been an honor. So again, I just want to say thank you so much, and I'd like to also congratulate um, all of today's um, honorees. So take care, everyone.